sure you you can you know attest to this being there that's what you want to play for right like you want that passion behind the fans and you want them to push you and you want them to you know at the end of the day man we rocking with y'all but we're gonna hold you accountable like it ain't ain't that kind of like what you look for in 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 a fan base a hundred percent and i'm gonna tell you this i know you play it in indiana and they got a great fan base but new york Philly and Boston, they're different animals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they love you, they love you, but they can turn to hate really quickly. Mm -hmm. But if you give 110%, man, they're going to love you. Um, and they want this team to win so badly. Mm -hmm. And you, I give the Sixers credit, man, to saving that cap space to get you and then all the other additions to go on the bench. They're going for it. Y'all got a nice little window. Now, I hope this is a wake up for Joel, this Olympic experience. He has not played well. And I'm hoping he's like, yo, man, I got to get in better shape. Because I, I, me personally, I think that's one of the reasons he's always injured. I don't think he's in good enough shape. But I think the way he's played, which is not well during the Olympics, should be a wake up call for him. Like, you know what? Yeah. I got to get in better shape. I got to get healthy. Because if we don't win the championship or go deep in the playoffs, it's going to be because of me. And, you know, he's been, he keeps getting hurt. And like I said, he got to take some responsibility for that. Bringing in you, Maxie's uh, stud, bringing in all those other guys. If Joel don't do his thing, the Sixers are not going to win. And like I said, he has not played well at his Olympic Games at all. And I'm hoping somebody, can get to him and say, yo, man, you need to get in better shape because the way you play in the NBA when we just going up and down the court, pounding inside, number one, you can't win like that consistently in the NBA today. But also, you got to be a little bit embarrassed the way you played in the Olympics. I had a conversation with him uh, not too long ago, and it was more so just it's a different dynamic when you play Team USA, right? Because you, you have to – it's a little bit – of a deferring thing that I think he's going through because there's so much talent on the floor. But one thing that I gave him was just like, you know, when I played on that 2016 team, my mindset was more so geared towards, I'm a pick dudes up 94 feet. Like I'm a pressure the hell out of whoever I'm guarding. Like I don't do that in the NBA, <laughs> but it yeah. was just, you know, I can't do all the things I usually do in the NBA but I got the energy now to do it here. So that was just kind of my conversation to him is just like, man, just try to find a way to stay engaged and challenge yourself in a different way than you would do in the NBA. So we had a good talk about and, that. And, and Paul, it's, it's like you're hundred percent correct because you know, I've been blessed to play on two Olympic teams. They're not going to walk the ball up and down the court and give it to you, no mm -hmm. matter how great you are. Right. <laughs> so you got to find a way to help the team win. Like for me, I was like, okay, well, let me play a little defense, that which wasn't my strong suit. Hey, let me get a bunch of down rebounds, which I love to do anyway. And then when the ball comes to me, be ready. But you have to find a way. And not only that, it works like that when he comes back to the NBA. Some nights, Max going to have it going. He not going to get the ball. Mm -hmm. Some nights, you going to be going off. He not going to get the ball. He can't mope around. He's got to be like, okay, it's Paul's night. Okay, it's Max's night. What can I do when I don't get the ball? Because this is a good, I'm hoping it's a good learning experience from him, number one, from a physical standpoint, but also like, hey, you know what? Because it's going to make his life so much damn easier. Right. Because I actually can sympathize with him. Because when I played on all those shitty Sixer teams, <laughs> they were running me in the ground. I got the ball every time up and down the court. <laughs> you know, I was getting my 30 a night, but it was the hardest damn 30 in the world. Yeah. And when I got traded to Phoenix and they gave me Dan Marley and Kevin Johnson, I'm like, damn, this is the easiest 26 I've ever got in my life. Right. Because I don't have pressure. to get the... Yeah, I said, I don't have to score every time down the court. I played better defense. My rebounding was good again because I was like, man, this, it's so much fun to play with great players. Mm -hmm. It's so much, so, and, and it's so much easier. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope, like I said, I hope this is a great learning experience for him. Mm -hmm. 
on that on the topic of the Olympics, I know they compare between the competition. Uh, well, the comp they, the, they they compare between the competition in the past and the competition now, right? Of back at that dream team, you know, era, there was around nine NBA players across, uh, you know, playing the international game. This team is faced off against about sixty-one international players that play in the NBA. What do you what what do you think is important when you highlight the game's competitiveness or the sport's growth? Well, first of all, they're both important, but I think I, I think these guys when I hear these guys said it on TV, they full of shit. Like, <laughs> first of all, yeah, have the international teams gotten better? One hundred percent. They still not better than the United States, right? Yeah. I mean, you you take away Joker and Giannis mm-hmm. and Luca. Those all three guys are great, great players. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm, if I'm missing somebody, got to throw Shea in there. Shea's, Shea's great, mm-hmm. also. Mm-hmm. But we still got the next ten best players mm-hmm. in every game. Mm-hmm. Probably, well, probably twelve. <laughs> so this notion, like, yeah, the international teams they have gotten better. They are, but we still got the best players mm-hmm. in the world. When we go to our bench. And there's nobody bringing a Jason Tatum or Drew Holiday or Halliburton or Derek White. Those foreign teams ain't bringing no dudes off the bench that good. <laughs> right. I guarantee you that. Listen, I don't know about, I don't even know every country. Ain't nobody bringing nobody off the bench betting Jason Tatum. Right. Okay? Right. Ain't nobody bringing anybody off the bench betting Kevin Durant. <laughs> yeah. So this notion, yeah, the, the international teams have gotten better, but there's never an excuse for the United States not to win the gold medal. We got the best right. team. We got the best players by far. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I say the same thing, right? Because when you look at it, yeah, Canada in particular has amazing guard play. And I think Canada is probably one of the better teams that could give USA a, a, a real shot if they can put it together. But top to bottom, their guard play is great, but they're just not big enough, right? You look at France. They got the size. But they don't have the guard play. Like, you can't yeah. find teams internationally that can put it all together the way USA USA team can. So, yeah, to your point, man, I just don't see how, you know, if we're locked in, it, there's there's no shot at USA losing. Oh, listen, if they lose, we can't let them back in the country. Uh, we can't. <laughs> I, I tell them they can't come back. <laughs> I mean, because with the team we got, I mean, it's, it's no excuse for us to lose the gold medal. Uh, all they got to do is go out there and play hard, mm-hmm. play unselfish, because that's really the key. Like, we talked about a little bit earlier, Joel, heck of a player. We're not going to walk the ball up and down the court to give it to you. LeBron, we're not going to walk the ball up and down the court. Same thing, like, whoever's in the game, like, hey, let's just let me just play basketball. It was so easy on the first dream team. We're like, yo, we got two starting lineups. Y'all play the first 10. We play the second 10. Let's just play basketball. Mm-hmm. We're, not, we're not really going to run no plays because if we play great defense and push it, that's all we got to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's how we say, hey, rebound, push, rebound, push. Now, Chuck was saying, y'all got to play some defense. And then that's when, you know, Michael, was, he was crazy back in the day when they were trying to lock, lock up Tony Kukoc. Mm-hmm. <laughs> him and Scotty Pippen, they weren't going to let him score because he was making more money than him. That thing was, that was some beautiful shit to watch. Yeah. I had never seen two guys <laughs> play defense like that. They were not going to, this dude was averaging like 40 points a game. And I think he was, I think I saw the stat. He was like five for 25 against her. And Michael and Scott are like, we not letting this motherfucker score. Mm-hmm. He's making more money than me and you. Screw Jerry Krause. We're going to kill his ass. Yeah, that's that's interesting right there. How you doing, Chuck? I'm Jackie 